to test my audio. All right, go live in one second, just making sure my stream's firing off to YouTube. Once it is, I'll get my screen up here. All right, cool. And we're streaming. All right. Switch my mic back over now that I know this is working. <clears throat> All right, so where I left off on last week was I installed uh, Hangfire. We were using Hangfire to basically run uh, the email, this email uh, confirmation email. So we were running this as a background job in Hangfire. So what I wanted to do, and I kind of mentioned uh, in the last stream was Really what I would like is this whole piece of code here um, to really be the thing that is actually running in a background job, just not the actual email portion because mainly there's a variety of things that could fail here potentially, um, pretty much all of this. So what I'd like to rather see is again, <clears throat> is have what's in the controller action just be what is specific to the framework itself in ASP.NET Core. So what I mean by that is really we got some uh, model state validation here, uh, like rendering the view if we need to, and then doing the actual redirect. Um, other than that, the rest of it is like our application code, and that's kind of the idea of getting this code out of here. So I'm gonna do something similar to what I did with uh, the can't remember what feature it was now. It was getting a list of orders and I put these all together. So that's what I'm gonna do is something similar to that. So let's do that. I'm gonna kind of rejig this to actually kind of put this all into a single command. So we'll call this uh, send confirmation. Send verification. That's what this action is called. Send verification email. All right. So this is probably actually maybe let's add a folder. Let's call this. I think this was under was it accounts. Where was I at with this? I was just in manage. Just kind of a weird. It's mainly related to your account. So yeah, let's put this in accounts. All right, so send verification email. So what I'm gonna do here is, let's call this the command. It's gonna be a request handler. Come on, writer, pick it up. Doesn't want to find anything. This is going to be a I request, and we're not going to do anything with it. It's like it's going to have no result. Uh, so this is going to take our send verification email command. All right. So for those unfamiliar, basically I'm going to have a command, which is basically going to be an object that's going to be passed into this handler from mediator. Now the idea here is, is we're going to make this class have all the parameters we need, um, properties that we need to actually be used. So you can think of it as everything that we were using in the actual um, control action. We just want to basically pull out any parameters that we actually need. So in that case, if we look at this, it's going to be the how we get in the user here. So the user is the claims principal, and that's an ASP.NET Core thing. So that's the user. So we don't want to pass this along. 
So let's do this. Let's grab all of this stuff and we'll start to rejig this. So this is going to need the user manager. have to rejig this because we don't want this user and this user is really going to be pretty much everything so what kind of parameters do we need here we need um, what else is on user that we can let's see what's in here get user by ID claims principal username users got to be a different way we can use do this user manager here's a good question what are we using with the user we want Get email confirmation token async. All right. What else here? So that's going to get where'd this thing end up? Oops. So we got a little URL helper here. This is a ton of fun here because this is all in ASP.NET Core. This might be, a little, and then this obviously is too because this is coming from the request to generate this URL. So we are kind of really stuck in ASP.NET land here with this. Um, what else is in user manager? Email is all take a claims principle. Maybe that's what the reason I didn't want to pass this is mainly because if we were doing something like this is going to work fine for for um, mediator because it's not serializing it. It's all done in memory. So I'll just go ahead with this, but I'll have to kind of revisit this because if we were doing something like storing this actual full command. What I'm about to do here in and serialize it and store it somewhere, you're probably not going to be storing a claims principle. At least I would never have. So I don't know if that's even possible or not. Uh, but let's do this. And we will do uh, what's this? I don't know if it's just. This we might end up having to use uh, some endpoint routing stuff to figure this out. I think. Let's see about that in a minute. All right, so so now what we can do is we could say request dot user. Pass that user over here, and we're going to do our scheme. Let's return a unit dot value because there's no return type here. All right, so now what I need to do is this email confirmation link. Let's go back to that. So this needs the URL helper. So let's rip this out. Put that in here. And then we'll take this out. And take that as a 
Fancy. Now, the interesting thing, I'm going to leave this uh, in queuing just for the time being because I'll kind of rejig this later. Uh, so let's see what this looks like. It's not going to know how to resolve this. Confirm email controller. So let's go here. Let's leave that one alone. Go back into our manage, and here we can now do. Where's our mediator at? We don't have one in here. We don't need this anymore. We don't need that. We don't need our email sender. Email sender, we're not needing that. So we go back to here and we can do mediator.send new send verification email. Command. Which we're gonna pass our let's make a constructor for this. User and scheme. So our user was straight. Well, I guess we can get rid of this. That was going to be the user from the context and then the request.scheme. All right. Oh, it's just pitching up the view. Run. All right. Oh, we probably got to register something, don't we? Oh, speed eater not picking all these up yet. Or is there something I didn't register? Probably something I never registered. Um, it's probably not this type. It's probably something else. Oh, URL helper. All right. So let's go to the startup. And configure services. We register the URL helper. That's interesting. What's the new? I'm assuming this is something new. URL helper factory. How do you register a URL helper? I don't know if it's just that simple. It feels like there's probably something else. Huh. 
Isn't that hilarious? It's my own paw hook. What did I write? This is doing it outside of ASP.NET Core, which is kind of amusing because that's ultimately what I'm going to want to do at some point here is be able to generate links. But I think this is probably old. I get the feeling that this is probably a little bit simpler now in ASP.NET Core 3. Maybe it is just registering how I have it. I guess we'll find out. I feel like there's a different way to do this. Survey says, oops, exceptions. In context URL helper. Yeah, there's a there's definitely a different way to resolve this. All right, I'll figure out what it is here. Let's do some searching. I feel like there was something oh, that's lovely. Yeah, something to do with an action context. Is this an old post? A little bit. Link generator class. Use the link generation with caution and middleware. Link generator. Link generator. That can get injected. Interesting. All right, what's the link generator do? Out of here. Let's see what we can do with this. Let's do link generator. What does that look like? a controller values and protocol it does not care about so that's not even a thing anymore which means that this isn't even needed so we don't need scheme anymore apparently gets the absolute URI See what this produces. And back here, we can get rid of this for now. Interesting. I feel like link generator is a <clears throat> a new thing in three arguments so it takes action controller oh it does take scheme values yeah well undo what I just did Back 
to this. Let's undo that. Four arguments. What are you talking about? All right, let's just do it without action. Oh, the action, not the action of get, the action of what the controller was. Um, what was it? So I don't even, th oh, well that's problematic. I don't even think this exists for one. That's kind of weird. What are the, yeah, so this, I'm trying to implement something that's not even real. Uh, let's do, so action, controller. We'll just say, we'll just make this go to where we were at. Let's go to go to manage and we'll go to my account because this doesn't even exist really. I think there's values, that's it. There's anything for actually. Weird. Confirm email. There's a bear. That's really weird. Let's go back to here. Yeah, confirm email. There is no confirm email controller. Oh, it's just routing to this page. Does that exist? All right. Yeah, it doesn't want to find that. Feeling this is gonna blow up though. And I get the feeling the other one, the URL helper, was probably um, just returning null or something. URL helper unable to resolve. Oh, do I still got it in there? Is that why? I didn't remove it. Link generator, startup, I don't need any of this. That's what it's complaining about, which I don't think it should be because it shouldn't even be trying to resolve that. time which is helpful so then if I go to my account 
send verification email. Let's see what we actually get back here. Probably no. Oh, it actually does send it back. Okay, good to know. And then we're running our background job. Well, that was a lot of fussing over that. <clears throat> so let's do check hang fire. We can see that job succeeded. And that was our confirmed send still that we had in here. All right, that was a long winded just to move this to a command. I'm trying to figure out this URL callback. All right, so. Now I have the command scheme where we weren't even using. Although this is actually probably wrong, right? Because the callback URL was a relative path without our domain. So we'd have to fix that up. Hence why we needed this scheme in the other one. I wonder what else is there is in here. We probably need to pass it from the initial request I'm gonna wanna assume probably more what we'd want to do because this is giving us the action controller object values yeah so you got to get this makes sense you got to do request dot scheme what else was it yeah and then request and then the host string all right so what is the host string uh, get rid of that get rid of this go back over here where's our method way up here so request.host string add that into here so here's a request host And see what it looks like. All right, go back to my account. I don't know why this was happening just for me, oddly. I needed to keep logging out. Something weird with that. think because I'm using everything in memory. All right, my account, send verification. And now, cool. All right, that's cool. So that's pretty much what I wanted to do. So now we have pretty much all of this self-contained here for actually sending the email. Um, these extension methods for doing, that was essentially doing this, um, I don't know, still kind of lost on the, on the need for it to have that extension method when you're only using it in one place, which is gonna be here anyways. Uh, but now, yeah, our command, our handler, and then the verification email, this actual action, we're just passing that off by sending that request. So, the next step of this whole thing that I want to get to now um, related to hang fire or just any type of background background work in general was to really not have this this particular execution in process meaning or even in within this this thread right now this send happens on the same thread or it goes to the thread pool because it's a basic await but Regardless, it's happening in this process, and we're gonna ex execute this piece, and then this piece right here is what we're running actually in the background. What I'd actually prefer is potentially not this be running in the background, rather this, this line essentially can be here for all intents and purposes. Um, but what we would be doing is instead of having something like a send here, rather what we'd have 
is we'd have something like in queue where we can enqueue this entire execution, that handler, separately in a background job, potentially in a different process entirely. Now, Hangfire doesn't really do this this way per se with kind of the mix between what you think of like mediator and how mediator works with kind of command objects and in handlers and dealing with that kind of dispatching. So what I want to do in the following series of this is basically enable that to be able to enqueue these jobs as kind of messages. So where that jumps off to the second part of this video is James, who I do the um, loosely coupled show with. Um, quick plug on that one. You can check out the our YouTube channel here. Um, he mentioned his um, open source uh, library that he has for doing this type of work uh, for task scheduling. He's got caching, queuing, mailing, event broadcasting. Um, in his open source library called uh, Coraval. And what I think is interesting here, I think this is a, a from the limited amount I've looked at it, a, a good primer to be able to get started, especially if the idea of task scheduling, like if you're gonna schedule stuff in the fu future, if you wanna enqueue particular things, or like event broadcasting, say, hey, this occurred and you can have multiple event handlers. Um, it seems, and I've watched one of his videos where he kind of took the eShop on web that I did with the emailing and he did it within um, his library, Coravel. So what I think would be interesting is, let me just take a gander at this a little bit here. And if it's something that I wanna take where I was gonna kind of create my pipeline using Hangfire is, essentially being able to do something similar with this. Um, I don't know where it would go. The biggest caveat to I, that I, I personally have is I absolutely need um, in the applications that I work with there to be persistence and durable storage for what you're scheduling and what you're enqueuing um, or what events you're broadcasting, broadcasting to. Uh, the primary reason is because I, they're generally not going to be running in the same process, meaning that if I enqueue a particular message and I want that to run um, some piece of code to execute somewhere, in most situations I have separate processes that are dealing with those. Um, you can think of them separately just kind of as worker roles where they're just churning through different, uh, piling through the queue or different tasks that were scheduled or handling events that were broadcast, they're not generally done within the same app, um, like the same actual running process. So maybe I go down the road of adding persistence to something like this, or it's something in between where I add more of a messaging kind of command objects component to Hangfire, which I've kind of done in the past, and I uh, I blogged about it a couple years ago, uh, a way of doing it. Uh, and like I said, what that enables you to do is it enables you to just enqueue commands, basically, um, or schedule commands, so that there is no difference between doing something in line in process or doing something out of process in, you know I mean, in Hangfire which ends up being um, pretty useful. So let me just, while I'm doing this on the stream here, I'll take a few more minutes and I will take a look on how you deal with queuing. So I think invocables is the thing I was most interested in because this ultimately is something that you can um, have dependencies that you're gonna inject into them. So this looks very familiar to you if you're doing something like um, any type of handlers. So this would be your handle, <clears throat> handler, right? This is an invocable, invocable where this is the, the payload, which you're defining here. 
and then this is the method that's going to be called for that payload. So that's interesting. It's a different way of thinking about it is that the invoke behavior, your execution, like if, it's almost kind of as if this is the So invocable with payload probably has this first type parameter is the actual handler. And the second type parameter, I don't know if there's more than one, are going to be these parameters that you're passing in. I'm going to say there's only one because this property probably has to exist on I invocable. So what that would look like, let's, uh, kind of funny I never use .NET add. I always end up just modifying the uh... oops I spelled it wrong I did let's add this in to the web project let's see what this looks like Maybe it's a side by side here a little bit. I don't even know how he calls these things. Is he calling them invocables? look at this this is going to be t is going to be the payload so the payload in this case is this and then our handler would be pretty much the exact same thing than what I would normally think of, but makes sense. Oh, what we do? There we go. All right. All right. So instead of a request, we actually have our payload. So our payload is here. Async, we don't need to return anything now, no unit value. And payload. All right, so that's the equivalent. Let's see if I can figure out how to <clears throat> wire this up without even looking at the docs. So we're probably going to have to do something here. So add. There's no types. It would have to look at types. Okay, so we actually have to register those. Okay, so our invocables, we actually got to. Send verification email invocable. So we're going to register that. And then let's go back to our manage control. 
controller. So instead of this, oops. <clears throat> So I'm going to have a Q, so IQ that I'm going to inject, which means I that IQ has to come from, I'm going to have to register something. Oh, there we go. Add Q. It's probably just split up more. So we go back here. There we go. All right, so this is our code eval stuff. All right, so now I can inject the IQ to here. All right, code Revel, IQ. And now what we can do is await Q dot Q, Q evocable, I think is what the idea was. Q invocable. Why would we need to give it the type parameter? Q invocable with payload. Hmm. So the weird thing about this <clears throat> is. that I guess where I'm th thrown back a little bit by this is the you need to know the handler you need to know who's consuming what you're sending so it's not really a like this is kind of the message but you need to know the recipient which is this versus when you're using something like mediator you're mapping behind the scenes a message, a request, which is a type, and you don't know who the receiver is. Um, this one, you actually need to know who the receiver is when you're defining this, which makes sense because that's why you have to register your invocable because you're telling it which one to actually call. I was That's why I was a little bit confused, I think, probably, is because I was expecting something to do, some scanning of some type to... Um, with payload area why is this complaining must be convertible to I invocable it's an I invocable with payload Q invocable with payload it's the invocable and then the model so what's the problem with that? I don't get it. TT params, there's my param. That's what's going in. Really wouldn't even need this one because that one's that one. It's going to infer it, it should. Is this not async? is an async for one. That's fine. Why the air would stay up? Let's see what air in here. And 
wants to be an I invocable. I don't quite get that. Is it gotta be both? Probably says it in the docs and I'm not, if it would help if I would read. And sure does. So it needs to be an I invocable and an I invocable with payload. Hmm. All right. So this should still all work exactly the same way. So if I go in here, let me log out. Log in. Count, and then I will send. I don't know if I was debugging. Probably not. Let's go see the jobs over here. Yep, there's our job. So let's check this out, see if this is working the way I think it is. Uh, let's go over here again. not breaking definitely not calling this one anymore oh there it goes just took him a second it probably pulls it probably iterates over an array which makes sense yeah and it's working the way you think it would and it's queuing that job so yeah so yeah we just accomplished pretty much the same thing um, so instead of using mediator um, I'm just using an invocable. So actually, let's get rid of this stuff because what's the point of using both Hangfire and this and this for the same purpose? So um, the confirmation email sender. Pull this out completely. Now it would look more like this. Really, what's the point at this point? we can just wait. All right. Where did I forget? Oh, we can leave this one. Might as well leave this one alone for now. All right. I think we're done. just sits in probably a configurable delay here for just how much fast it's iterating. There we go. Cool. Nice. So I guess that is the two different ways of doing this, uh, either using mediator to do this. And I mean, ultimately the 
look like the actual core of what the handler is is pretty much identical. I mean, it's just I'm not using this one. Um, so yeah, interesting. Vocable with payload. So yeah, the caveat, I guess, to this, like I said, is no storage, but <clears throat> if you don't need it and you can do everything in process, I to me, this feels like there's less setup involved for sure. I don't need that at all. Um, there we go. All right, so. Two examples, I guess one was converting this to be purely using mediator in a command and a handler, and then also using um, Corvel to pretty much do the exact same thing, uh, but using their invocables, which are using their queuing. So like I said, also task scheduling in here, event broadcasting. So you're going to create registrations, which are you're registering for a particular event, and basically these subscribes are, yeah, your subscribers, and these are the things that are going to handle this particular event. Makes sense. You're just doing it all through the config, uh, like through configuration, which makes sense. Cool. So you add events, register, subscribe. Cool, so here's an event, blog post created, and then there's your listener. Yeah, and then don't forget to register your listener. The one, if you're used to using Meteor, <clears throat> the one kind of benefit, and it depends how you look at this or not. Okay, I, I'm, it's not even a benefit, it's just there are different ways of dealing with this, is this warning is pointing it out, is that you need to register this type. Now, when you're using Mediator um, in ASP.NET Core, you don't because it does, it scans assemblies from what I remember. Um, so that's why when I, this, I never had to register because in the startup for Mediator, um, it's doing this. It's, you basically give it assemblies and it scans those assemblies looking for um, I request handlers and then registering them. So some will view that as useful, some won't. Um, there's different ways to look at it. I won't even get into that, whether you wanna do, it's mainly around assembly scanning um, and whether you want to be doing that or not and looking at all the types within a, an assembly. All right, so on that note, I think where I'm gonna pick this up next is for either Hangfire or uh, Corvel is I'm going to try to implement some type of pipeline kind of Russian doll using either one of them um, I'm kind of tinker about that and maybe I can even somehow use both of them um, we'll see where this goes though so that's it for this stream let me know what you think in the comments um, this obviously was probably a little bit longer stream than I normally do since I got hung up with this link generator, so I usually like keeping them around 20 minutes to a half an hour. I know this one was a lot longer, so if you got this far, appreciate it. Thanks. Till next time.